Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Simple Theories with That Creepy Reading, and today I would like to tell you about a simple theory simply known as the Billy and Mandy Memory Theory. Without further ado, let's begin. Remember the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, episode Who Killed Who? In the episode, Mandy retrieves some dice from a house. There is a scene where she meets a woman named Miss Dolan, voiced by Betty White. She is, of course, an elderly woman who converses with Mandy over what Billy had said earlier in the episode of Mandy. At the end of the episode, we discover that Miss Dolan actually beat the Grim Reaper in a staring contest after she and Mandy scared away Billy. Mandy exits the house. Mandy then looks back to discover that Miss Dolan was in actual fact, a ghost. And in the final scene, we also discover from a portrait that Grimm knew her for quite a long time and had actually came to Reaper's soul. What's more unsettling is the fact that Miss Dolan had known Grimm for so long, almost as if Grimm was her friend throughout her entire life. Just like Mandy, if you think about it. The similarities are actually quite shocking. Just look at how Miss Dolan is consistently beats death, and how Mandy completely wins over Grimm in almost every episode, such as in arguments or situations. Also, if you look back at the pendant Miss Dolan was wearing, you can see that it is in fact a spider. Mandy has always had affinity towards spiders, and has showed no fear towards Jeff the spider. Furthermore, if you look at how Miss Dolan reacted when Mandy s said that Billy didn't allow Mandy to play Who Killed Who, simply because Mandy was a girl, Miss Dolan reacted violently and never really stated why. What if she's remembering those exact words when Billy told her all those years ago? It should be noted that at the very beginning of the show, Mandy could have beaten Grimm in a staring contest, but in reality, she beat him in a limbo competition at the beginning of the series. Due to Miss Dolan's old age, she could have confused the limbo contest for a staring contest, that she and Billy had simply won at that. Mandy could be, very could be a very senile old woman who is remembering her childhood memories in the form of Miss Dolan, and she began to imagine what she experienced as a child. However, instead of normal people, she remembers monsters, as she is schizophrenic. Have you not noticed that the show gets progressively weirder and weirder? This could be due to the fact that she is slowly losing her mind, but yet in her imagination everything is going on perfectly and ordinary. For example, in episode uh, 10, season 6, the plan to force obedience upon Mandy backfires, and Mandy seemingly takes control of the people around her, by commanding them to do so. This points to Mandy being controller of the world, just like a child playing pretend. It also shows that Mandy will inevitably become an old woman whose soul shall be reached by Grimm. And in her last dying breath, she realizes that. <laughs> Grimm had finally won. Well, that was the Billy and Mandy memory theory. And to be honest, it's a quite a good theory. Um, the great idea is that it actually kind of makes sense. You know, Mandy being controller of the world, which she actually is shown to be, being this fearless girl who basically takes charge and shows no emotion, and the fact that Miss Dolan in the episode, again, could be seen now remembering old past events and simply reliving her childhood memories in her old senile mind, and the fact that we all inevitably die, and that Grimm is the person who takes our souls, actually does make sense, and there is quite a lot of coherence in the story. I would have to say that this might be one of the best theories I've read. You know, it's not quite a long shot to say that this could be an actual good theory. The only downside of this is that it could have been written a little bit better. I had difficulty reading it on a grammar and way it was written. Um, 
But besides that, this is a fantastic story and honestly a 10 out of 10 when narrated, but when reading, I give a little bit of caution. This story was done by my good friend Carrot. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description below. He also reads creepypasta just like I do, and he also needs some help with general channel art, so if you're an artist who might be willing to help him out, go to his channel and be like, yo, you have a sexy voice. Go, go help me out, you know? But besides that, yeah, this is a great story, great, great plot, great coherence, and the fact that it plays on nostalgia, yet also being a great story on its own, makes this probably one of the modern day classics and creepypastas. This has been That Creepy Reading, signing off.